Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through my method for creating easy watercolor jewels using brush pens. So this is a really great tutorial if you're on the go or if you want to minimize the amount of materials and mess that you have to clean up afterwards. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. I'm going to walk you through all the steps so you can get this exact outcome. So the first thing you want to do when you're creating watercolor jewels is find a really good reference photo. This reference photo will inform a lot of the decisions you make, especially for different color variations to simulate depth even though it's flat. You also will get an idea pretty quickly about how to get your geometric shapes together. So I am just using very few materials. This is a 140 pound Canson cold press watercolor paper. I have a mechanical pencil and a click eraser. It just makes it a little easier to erase later on. I have a fine tip Pentel water brush. And then I just have some watercolor brush pens right here. These are from the Color It brand, and you can see there's a bunch of really pretty colors in here. So these are the watercolor brush pens that I'm gonna be using for this video. So I'm just gonna set this aside, and I'm gonna put on screen the reference photo that I am using for this tutorial. And if you visit the link in the video description, you can see a larger image of that if you'd like, as well as some other possible reference images you can use for this tutorial. So I'm gonna keep that on screen while I kind of sketch this out for a bit just so you can kind of see how I draw or establish those angles and it's okay to alter it slightly if you want to simplify it it's usually best to simplify at the beginning that way you don't feel overwhelmed or you have too many little areas that maybe you're not sure of what to color them or how they fit into everything so I simplified this one a little bit you could see on the example that we had another level of these angles going around but I just simplified it to two right here and it works just as well so we're gonna keep nice and basic and simple so I'm just gonna draw this out and kind of show you how I freehand uh, geometric shapes so first you can see this emerald shape is based off of a rectangle so we're just gonna draw out a rectangle I'm gonna draw with pencil a little darker than I normally would when you're creating yours you want your pencil lines to be as light as possible because once they get wet you can't erase them so just keep that in mind I'm keeping this dark just so you can see it on screen but normally this would be much, much lighter. This is also an HB um, lead. If you'd like lighter pencil strokes, um, you could also switch to like an H or 2H, 3H, 4H pencil and you'll get much lighter lines just by the nature because the graphite is much harder so you won't get darker lines just by nature. So in order to get these angles correct or just similar on all of the edges, these angles right here, um, what I do is I just draw a line down, nice and soft, and then I try and replicate the space right here that I have over here. So I'm gonna create this down, and then I wanna do the same thing up here, making little squares up at the top. And then I want to replicate this space right here down here so it's similar. And then what I can do is just connect these points. So now I can get this angle, I can get this angle, and I'm not even using a ruler. It just feels more organic. You could definitely use a ruler for this if you want it more precise, but I like just the hand drawn nature of things. So now we can erase away these corners because we don't need them anymore. Okay, and I also do not need these other lines right now anymore either. I just need the outline of the emerald. So I'm just gonna lightly erase those away. And I have links in the video description. If you click that link, you can access all the supplies that I'm using for this video. I've linked everything right there. So just check out the video description for that. So you'll notice on the reference image that we have a small rectangle right in the center of this right here. So in order to draw that out, we want a center point right down the middle of our emerald. So I'm just gonna eyeball this and give myself a center line right here. And then you'll notice that it's a little further down. So I'm just gonna bring down a line, a guideline right here. And then I wanna kinda of replicate this distance down here. So it's looking kinda of like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, so don't be too hard on yourself right here. We're just 
roughing things in. And then I'm just gonna draw in this rectangle. So I'm just gonna go to the left of my center point just slightly and then the same amount to my right. And that should give me a decent rectangle right in the middle of this. Okay. And now I can erase away these extra lines that I had drawn in. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is the corner of this center rectangle that we have right here, you wanna draw from this point to this point, from this point to this point, and you wanna do that with all of these corners. Okay, and now we can start drawing in these kind of tiers right here. I'm gonna keep it really basic, so similar to what I have as the example, I'm gonna have two tiers. So I'm gonna bring down, the first one's gonna be chunkier than the second one. So I'm just going to bring down a line and try to keep it consistent as I draw in my, the rest of my corners. And what I wanna do is kinda of keep this angle similar to the angle I draw here. So sometimes it's nice if you just kinda of sketch over the initial one helps you to replicate it a little better. So this is a straight line and I can just bring this straight down. And then you're gonna do the same thing for the second tier. This one's gonna be a little skinnier. So that all looks really good and now we're ready to paint in. And once again, if your lines are a little bit dark, you can come over with your eraser and just very softly erase on top of some of your lines to kind of tone it back a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna keep mine nice and dark so you can see what's happening right here. Okay, so now we're gonna get to creating our paint swatches. So when you are on the go or whenever you use watercolor brush pens, they are really, really rich and really vibrant if you just use them as is. So I'm not gonna like color in the different areas on my emerald right here. I need to soften them up a little bit. So I actually create my own color palette using the brush pens. So it's a really nice workaround to create those softer colors using these really vibrant colors as your base. Okay, so I'm gonna set our example aside for a minute. I have another piece of watercolor paper right here, so I'm gonna use this paper as my palette. So I'm gonna create all my colors on this one. So since my main colors are kind of green and bluish right here and really soft green, I'm gonna grab some greens and blues right now from um, my watercolor brush pens. Okay, so I grabbed a bunch and you can see I also grabbed black just to darken up some colors um, for that extra contrast when we need it. So what I like to do is I grab my greenest one because I know I'm going to be using this one quite a bit and I'll just give myself a circle of color right here and I'll give myself a few other circles that I can mix with other colors or maybe even keep it on its own. I'm gonna do one right here that'll just be on its own. So this first one will be my darkest one, so I want a little bit of black mixed with it. So I'll put a little black right here, and I want some dark blue mixed with it too for my darkest area. So the areas that I'm looking at right here are like the top and these edges down here that really helps simulate the depth of the jewel. So now looking at these other colors, I need to kind of riff off of this. So I'm gonna create one that's just mixed with blue. I'll mix one that's just with black. And then I can do some different shades of blue with this green as well to give myself some other options. You basically just want a bunch of different color combinations. So now I'm just gonna do a regular blue and maybe a lime green. See how that works. Maybe a little bit of this green in here too. And maybe I'll do this one with a lime green as well. Okay, so now we can start painting. So I have a heat tool over here on the edge to help things dry a little bit faster. The most important thing to remember as you work is that you don't want any areas that you paint, you don't want to then paint an area that's right next to it because we want these really crisp edges because otherwise it's not gonna look like a jewel at all. So I'm gonna start with my really dark colors. So I'm gonna start here. I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of water 
onto here and I'm gonna mix in my black, my green, and my blue together and you can see how nicely they blend. And even if I wanted to color a little up here, you can see that nice blend, how I'm getting these different color combinations even though I didn't have them in a marker by default. So now I'm gonna come in here and I know my darkest ones are right here, right here, and up here. All right, so now I'm gonna let those areas dry or I can speed it up using my heat tool. And then I'm gonna come back and then just follow the guide. I go back to my reference image constantly to kind of look at what kind of vibrancies, hues, how soft the colors are, how dark, how saturated they are, and then just kind of build off and work off of them from there. So I'm gonna speed up the video because this is just gonna be painting. You just wanna mix your colors over here with a little bit of water, test them above before you use them over here to make sure you like the color, and just keep going back and forth to your reference image, and then you can complete it. We're gonna come back, I'm gonna do the center part together with you because you can see it's a little bit different um, right in the center. So we're gonna do that and then we'll put the shadow on at the very end. So I'm gonna speed up the video, I'll add some music, and I will be back. Okay, so once you have your jewel all painted except for the center part, we're going to very lightly erase the center part, but just leave a hint of where these lines were because you want to use those for like the little glimmer or shine because there's some reflection going on. We don't want it to be too bold. We want it to be a nice subtle effect. So what I do is I grab my lightest colors. So first I'm going to do a base of really light green right here. So I'm just gonna paint this whole inside in with the green. Okay, so it's really important that the center part is totally dry before you do the next part because we need the lines to be really, really crisp. So I'm gonna return to just my green right here and get it a little darker than it was of the base. And I'm just going to find that line right on the left side and bring this down. So it's a really, really subtle effect, but it'll be really powerful when you kind of stand back and look at it. And then we want to repeat it up here in the corner. So this kind of triangle over here. Okay, and then the last place you want to do it is down here for this kind of corner triangle. And then just a little bit on this edge. All right, so the last thing we need to do is just add a shadow onto it. So a really simple way to do that is to just grab your black marker, give yourself some color over here in your faux palette, and then you're going to mix it up, and you want this to be pretty subtle, but it's still going to be impactful, and you're just going to come down the right side and kind of have it fade off with your water, and then come down over here, and then the bottom edge. You gotta work fast so everything, it looks like it was one complete motion here and how it fades off. And then the last thing you wanna do is just grab a decent amount of black and you wanna make these edges a little darker. Okay, so that is how to create a watercolor jewel 
using brush pens and a really simple palette that we kind of expanded and made more complex with color mixing. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design and lettering and painting tutorials. And once again, hit the link in the video description. You can have access to all the supplies used in this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.